Hey YouTube, sorry I've not posted in a while. Uh, I've been kind of busy doing doing other things. So I thought I'd make a, uh, a video today about magic. Now I know I mentioned in the other video that I was a magician. I said I'd, I'd kind of show some magic. Uh, but then I watched a, a video recently by Chris Ramsey. He's, a, he's another magician. I'll put a link down. He's a, a very big YouTuber. Um, he's got loads of stuff. He does some awesome puzzle videos as well. Uh, which is kind of making me contemplate buying some puzzles. Well, they know me, I'd rather get like frustrated. Um, but he did a video basically looking through his magic drawer and as he said in his video. So every magician has a magic drawer. Yeah, I've got a magic kind of whole unit type thing. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'll make a video on mine and, and show you guys what's in it. Um, not gonna be giving anything away, no secrets. Um, although I will be showing you some some things that I find quite interesting, and maybe little tricks that I don't perform as much, which is why they end up in my drawer. But they're quite they're quite cool little quirky things. First of all, um, I'm not actually going to show you in the drawer because I've taken everything out because I, I opened it and realised that it was such a mess. Even I didn't know what half the things in it were. Um, so in in looking through it, I thought you know what I'll pick out some some interesting things and and show you basically, like a. Little magic show and tell. So first of all, as I was looking through, um, I found I found these. Now some of these aren't. The reason I don't do them is because they're they're almost they almost are like puzzles rather than magic tricks themselves. Or they don't. I don't know. They don't quite fit my style of performing. They're, they're good little tricks, but I I the reason they're in my drawer is because I don't use them a lot. I'll tend to get them out every so often. Now, the first thing is this one. I think it's called mental block or something um, you can get various versions and what it is is basically these four rods and they've got like random numbers on each side um, and what happens is um, first of all the spectator picks one puts it down on the table and you can tell them what all the numbers add up to dead quickly it's almost like a, a so it's like you're proving you can do kind of speed maths and you're really really smart so I don't know if it's a trick or well, it is a trick, but it's it's kind of showing this um, this skill um, that you've got. So yeah, then they then they pick two and they put two together, and you can tell them what both. Then they can do three, and there is actually a way where they can make them so they don't line up. So obviously the top number is twenty eight, and then you've got um, nine hundred and thirty four. Um, you know what I mean? So they don't have to be right together. But basically that's the premise of the trick. Now these, what I've got, um, managed to get hold of some, they're actually metal, um, metal, like powder coated. They're getting a bit battered. Um, but apparently the metal ones are quite difficult to, to find now. I know a lot of people have like little wooden versions or I presume they've made plastic versions. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little thing, but it's not something I, I tend to do at gigs. Maybe if I'm going around someone's house and you know, I'll, I'll chuck it in my bag as, if conversation comes up about talents and things, it's a, it's a nice little thing going, oh, well, I learned how to add up really, really quickly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice little little effect, but don't really use it much. So the next one, um, I actually bought from a local shop. Now, I presume you can get them online and everything. It is called the, the Mummy Mystery. Now, the reason I don't perform this um, is because I'll, I'll show you. It actually looks like a toy. Um, the parts are plastic and uh, I don't know if it's focusing very well. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the, there's, the, the pieces are kind of really, really toy-like. So the premise is basically, you have the, uh, have the, little, the little plastic cop in there um, and um, you have the, the three mummies. Obviously one's red, one's blue and one's yellow. Um, and they're all the same size and everything. And what you get them to do is you get them to, um, while you're not looking, they pick one, um, they hide the other two in the pocket and they put it in the coffin and um, leave the coffin on the table. You can turn around and you can tell them what color, um, what color's inside basically without looking. Obviously you tell them to hide the other two because you know if you leave those two on the table, it's pretty obvious it's the yellow one that's inside. Um, but yeah, um, the good thing about it, I love it, it, it does actually, um, 
it does actually fool a lot of people. They see it as kind of a puzzle, but they just still can't work out how you how you're doing it. Um, and the good thing is, is there is no see-through bits. There's no holes. There's no the method is really really clever. Um, I do quite like it, but as I say, it's not something I'd, I'd take to a gig or anything. Just mainly because of the looks of it and trying to fit it in there. However, I did then find this one. Now it's still plasticky. However, it's it's not got the, the, the bright colours and the and the stickers and things on. So it looks a bit better. So here's the here's the, the other coffin. As you can see, it's not compared to that one. You can't really see because of the focus, but it's uh, slightly bigger as well. Um, but it, it is like nicely moulded. Now I did think of like um, maybe painting it just to make it look a little bit better. Um, yeah, and, and the mummies that go in these, um, so as, as you can see, so obviously they're the mummies from, from the, the normal one. This one, they are, now that's not showing up on camera. <laughs> Let's try the dark one. There we go. So it's actually a proper molded little like lady mummy person. Um, and these ones, rather than the bright colors, you basically got a white one, a gray one, and a black one. Um, but the effect's exactly the same, the method's exactly the same. It's just kind of a, a deluxe version of it. But even though they're plastic, I, They've got a charm to them. I do like. I do like it as a little trick. I do. I, that is, yeah, that's a good one. That. So if you can find one of them, I'm sure you can pick it up online. If you if you're a beginner magician, um, or you, you're a young person, and you want you want something you can just baffle people with. That is a nice little, um, nice little effect. That. Now what I did find, is um, some cards that I printed off called Mental Painter. Now this is another great one for. Um, for if you're just starting out, what it is actually is you, you get the PDF, you have to print these cards off yourself and each card has got a, uh, a series of, of words on which relate to images and what you do is you download the app and I believe it's free on Android, I'm not sure if it's available for iPhone, I don't have an iPhone um, so I'm not sure but I think it's free on Android and basically what happens is um, <clears throat> they pick one of these, you show them um, pictures on the screen um, each screen's got multiple pictures and, and what you do is you tell them to scroll through the pictures um, until the, the one that they're thinking of is somewhere is one of the pictures on the screen because there's kind of I think it displays eight on the screen at a time and you can scroll through like whichever way you want and uh, you then get them to look at the pictures and they're all all kind of grayscale and what I do is I tell them to to imagine their picture is being coloured in and slowly but surely the one picture that they're thinking of on the screen does actually start to colour in. Now this is a great little a great little trick. The reason I don't tend to perform it is because it does involve the phone and I'm not a fan of the phone things because they go, oh, it's the app. But it is nice that you get like you get the physical um, the physical word cards that they, they pick uh, and they can pick any one and um, yeah, it's a it, it's quite a nice trick. So there are a few of um, a few little quirky things that, that I found in my drawer that uh, well I don't use, but I, I'm not going to get rid of because I kind of like them. I do them every so often. Um, now the other thing, which I will I'll drop a clip in, um, is my playing card collection. Now I've been collecting cards since I started doing magic, um, and. A lot of them, I know people think, oh, yeah, trick decks and things. They're not. A lot of the decks that I bought are bog standard. They're just really fancy ones. They're just nice. Um, some of them do have some some things that help magicians. Um, maybe like um, a kind of, some have reveals on the boxes. Um, so, for example, it'll say a certain card hidden on the box or things like that. But they're not, they're not trick decks as such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, rather than, rather than, going through every deck and what it is and whatever. Um, you've seen a quick eye overview there. Um, is uh, I'll go through a few of my favorites or a few ones that have got a, a particular story behind. So as I was saying about fancy cards, um, a lot of magicians use standard bicycle cards um, because a lot of the manufacturers of tricks and things in America, like they are the standard cards. You've probably seen them before. Um, they're a bit more difficult to get in the UK but you tend to see magicians using them quite a lot. Like I say, they are quite popular elsewhere. Um, 
So what I did is the first kind of fancy deck I bought is, a, is another bicycle deck. Um, the good thing about them is you know you're getting the same quality and things, but they, they just look nicer. So as you can see, this is really, really battered. The, 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 yeah, it's the box is battered and the cards are really, they're not, they're not white on the edges anymore. They, these are the Bicycle Guardians and I really, really like the back design on them. They're like um, kind of guardian angel type things. Um, and the fronts are fairly standard. I do prefer cards that have got, because then at least you can do magic to them and, and people like, well, they don't look too out of the ordinary. They've just got a nice, nice back. Um, so they're still one of my favorites. Don't really use that deck anymore because it's getting a bit greasy and it doesn't, doesn't really handle very well anymore. Another one I found um, was these, it's, I don't, you, I don't know if you can see the writing, but it's the Bicycle Tactical Field Playing Cards. Now these are actually a, a standard deck that Bicycle made for like the armed forces and things. Um, in fact, it says somewhere, yeah, so it says more durable to extreme weather conditions, ideal for tactical environment, red lens playable. Now we'll come back to that in a minute. Add to your pre-deployment checklist, great to use downtime activities, useful for C and let, etc, etc. Exclusively produced for the American service members. There we go. Um, so basically these were for soldiers to put in their kit bag, so we've got cards to play. And um, they are in this really nice like dark green um, if, um, colour. And the fronts are pretty much standard, except where it says here, um, red lens playable, so you know if you've got um, don't know the technicalities, almost like the night vision type corrective lenses, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, the red lenses, basically the red cards, it's probably not showing up on camera, but compared to, let me find a, <coughs> there we go. So as you can see, there's, it's coming up kind of orangey on the camera. I don't know if you can tell what, the red there is slightly, it's like a darker, um, darker red. So it means that when you've got red lens on, the red, it's still visible. You, you can't actually, uh, if obviously if you're wearing red, they'd, they'd kind of just disappear. Um, now I didn't notice about these because I started using these um, for magic because I thought, yeah, I like, I like having the green back. They're still a standard bicycle deck, but it's just a bit nicer. Then what I discovered is that they're actually thicker as well. They are more durable, uh, which is nice, but it does say they're suitable for C and they're not actually waterproof, they are just general cards, they're just a bit thicker, so they'll last a little bit longer. Now this deck, it's not special as such, it was, I say limited edition, I think they still make it, um, but it's kind of got significance to me, um, because of what I actually used it for. So this is the um, the uh, Monarchs deck from a company called Theory11, um, and what this is, this is the, the um, they had some red ones before, this back design is actually black, but obviously I love the cards as they are, but like I say, these are for the Now You See Me 2 film. In fact, this card in the back here is the Now You See Me 2 promo card. Um, and I just like the design in general. Like that's the seal, I didn't want to break it, so I stuck it on the back, it's got this red nice little seal. Um, really nice box and everything. Uh, and yeah, basically these were the design, I think they used the red ones in the film because um, they worked with Theory 11's um, team of magicians, you know, to, to um, learn magic and things. So um, the actors had coaching by magicians from the company. So I thought that was a nice collaboration. And I also used them for when I performed at, I performed down in Stoke um, a while back, for the actual film. Um, Cineworld asked me to, to go and, they, they basically had me and uh, my friend in the foyer kind of promoting the film. If people were gonna see it, we'd show them some tricks. So they actually saw some magic, uh, just to kind of make their cinema experience a bit a bit more fun. Um, now also, the, one other thing I do like about this is that on the top. Um, and I like that, that skull with the swords through so much. I actually have it tattooed on my arm right there, you see. Um, yeah, I just saw it and I thought I really like I really like this kind of line art, like intricate style. It's cool. So a while back, me and my friend decided we would we'd start creating. We'd got a few tricks that we'd created ourselves, and a lot of magicians um, buy their tricks online. 
Um, so we wanted to make a, a, a download site. So basically we'd film the tutorials and, and people would buy the, the video of us teaching them. Um, and in that, what we decided to do is we decided to, we thought, oh, it'd be cool to have our own cards. So we went, I forget which website it was, uh, we went to get our um, own cards printed. It was called Hexic, Hexic Magic Media. Um, that's actually got a name on the bottom. And yeah, so I designed the box, it's pretty simple. That's a joke, one ordinary magic deck. It's literally just an ordinary deck. Um, but we thought that was funny. And uh, yeah, the, the tuck case. The only downside to these is they are really, really naff cards. I don't use them. They're, um, there's a, a custom design. That The quality and everything. That You know the sites where you can get promo cards and stuff? People don't tend to use them for magic. So they're all right for playing, for playing games and stuff, but the... Uh, yeah, the, the pips on them and stuff are just, they're just a bit naff, well, compared to a lot of other cards. Um, yeah, it's an alright deck, it, it, it kind of handles alright, just not not the greatest um, for magic, really. Um, so I keep them around us, because there is literally them with this deck in existence. Um, we didn't end up getting any more, we were, we were testing the quality of them, see if it was worth getting them made properly and all this and that. But seeing as, because I got the, the, the custom because I designed the tuck case and got them to print the tuck case, normally they'll either cellophane wrap the cards or you pay a bit more and you get a white box. Because I went for all that, um, it actually cost me about 30, I think it was about 35 pound after postage and stuff. 35 pound for one deck of cards. A bit expensive. Although saying that, saying that, there are more expensive cards out there, especially collector's editions. In fact, this one here, I have here, in fact, the uh, the top's missing because they're getting really old and tatty now. Um, these are Madison Private Reserves, and I'll show you the backs. They're very minimal. They've literally just got his logo on the back. Um, now, he's known for, for bringing out tricks and, and, and bringing out his decks, um, but this particular one, yeah, I think he had some, some black ones, some different colours. These kind of red ones, the burgundy ones, weren't available for a while. He literally got them printed for him and his friends, hence private reserves. Um, so then when he did start selling them, he said, okay, if you want a, a, a deck of these, like the, the, the bog standard cards, just really nice, nothing too special or anything about them. But he said, if you want them, um, there you go, they're available now, you can buy them a hundred pound. A hundred pound for a deck of cards. And people bought them, which, blows my mind. I suppose if you're a collector, fair enough. Now you're probably thinking, Gaz, you've got a deck of them in your hand. Well, actually, I was lucky enough to to uh, be friends with, with another magician who actually knows the guy and he'd got sent um, quite a few of them. And I was at his house one day, he's like, oh, did you want a few decks? Oh, I've got, yeah. And he just kind of took me a few decks and uh, that was one of them. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. They are nice, I use them occasionally, I do like the design. Um, personally, I don't know if I'd pay £100 for a deck of cards, but, you know, there are some people out there that do. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, it was just a, a quick thing. I may, I may, once I've actually sorted out um, all my stuff um, and got stuff together at, only looking through it now, I realised how um, unorganised it actually is. So I managed to dig out these things that I've just showed you. Um, but yeah, hopefully in the future I should should bring you a few more magic videos if that is what you want to see. And I'll, I'll film some uh, performances and things like that. And uh, yeah, give you a little insight into the magical world of magic. Anyway, thanks for watching.